Hi everyone and welcome to a short video on how I process wood. It's subtitled Where Does Wood Come From? and I know it literally grows on trees but it's more where I source wood. I'm not an expert and I'm sure there are other ways but this system works for me. What follows is a short presentation on where you can get wood from, some of its advantages and disadvantages though I'm sure the list is not exhaustive and a video which mainly focuses on how I process freshly cut wood. Some examples here are some spalted beech and wood I think is cherry, I'm not sure. So enjoy the video and thanks for watching. So where does wood come from? I've listed four. A shop, a timber merchant, a tree garden business, or what I've called opportunistic occasions. So the first one is shop. You can go in and you can select from a shelf, but bearing in mind that wood has been chopped down, sawn and cut, dried and sealed. Can be a little bit pricey, but you do have a good selection. Second option is a timber merchant. There you'll get soft and hard woods. They're usually kiln dried, comes as large planks, is untreated and rough sawn, reasonably priced and it's priced by cubic feet. A quick explanation of what a cubic foot is. Third option is a tree or garden business. There are trees are usually just cut and your choice depends on when you arrive can be reasonably cheap though you have to look through your pieces yourself and you may have to process it. Sometimes they do have some sort of showroom but you'll pay a little bit more for those pieces of wood because they're usually kiln dried. The fourth one I've called opportunistic occasions and these are storms, friends, passing by in the car. There may be others I haven't thought of however downside is irregular availability. You usually have to process it yourself. For what we all like, it's usually free. I have a spalted beech log, which has just been cut down. It cost me five pounds from a tree garden services. It's approximately 17 inches in diameter and height. And these are the tools I'm gonna to use. An ax, some wedges, an old ax blade and a sledge. I also have a roadside log, as I say, I think it's cherry. It's just been cut down, literally, and I got this for free. It's approximately 12 inches in diameter and 24 inches in height, and similar tools are gonna to be used. For this video, I'm gonna use the larger of the logs. The spalted beech, half of it has already been processed, and towards the end of this video, I'll show the results of that.
So here is the uh, cut piece of timber from the uh, bandsaw. It's roughly just over 13 inches long by about 10 inches wide and about 5 inches deep. I could either use it and create a very deep bowl blank or I could cut this in half and make several shallow blanks for bowls. I think I'm going to cut this in the middle and make some shallow bowl blanks simply because as you've seen before I already have a number of deep spalted beach bowl blanks. So as you can see on the bandsaw I have this cut piece of wood and I'm just going to run it through roughly in the middle. I'm not worried about being too exact so I'm just going to slice this up the middle. I'm not boy with the cutting process. You'll just see the finished result. With this guide I can just position it on the wood to where I think is the best pattern. Punch a hole, stick in pencil and just mark it around. And I can then do the same for a couple here. So with the blade changed to a 3 8 inch blade, I'm just going to actually start the bandsaw and turn a rough circle out of this uh, spalted beach. This is the wood that I got from the log that you've seen earlier on in the video. Over on the right are five bowl blanks which have either been sealed with PVA glue or molten wax. The same sealing has been applied to the six pieces of wood here. At the back are the off cuts which I'll maybe use for firewood. Right, the two pieces of wood that you see here, right, I may process this piece right, and make some stabilised spalted beach pens. If you'd like to see me do that, just give me a shout and I'll make another video on how I do that. The log at the bottom still has to be processed, which I'll maybe do next week. After processing the wood, what happens next? Either I put it outside in a covered shelter or store it inside on shelves. 
Purchased wood is either kept in another shed or a separate shelf as it is already dry. Some wood can be rough turned and stored in paper bags with shavings, though I do not have any of these. Another option is a DIY kiln where the wood can be successfully dried in about three months or so, but that's another subject. I have used a microwave to dry wood before turning and I also do use a small oven for drying wood, especially if I'm stabilising.